it was free. The ultimate freebie treasure of a lifetime. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time dropping by for a visit, I'm Melanie and the name of my channel is Melanie Thompson. For those of you that have been following my channel for a while or maybe you've caught my Wednesday series that I do on location at the Crossroads Country Mall, you guys have heard me talk about that place a lot and I love the Crossroads Country Mall so much and I have made so many wonderful friendships in the time that I've been going there. There's this one lady in particular, her name is Betty, and she's been a vendor at the Crossroads for a long time. And I love Betty's booth. Betty always has the greatest things for sale. I swear, it's like, I love everything that she has in her booth and everything is always priced fantastic. After I started my vendor booth, I feel like Betty and I became instant friends. Betty is such a sweet soul and she is so kind and I just love talking to Betty. And every time that I'd have a question, Betty was so helpful and kind of just guided me, you know, giving me information and stuff on what I could do in my booth. And I just kind of feel like Betty has taken me under her wing a little bit, kind of shown me the ropes and I appreciate it so much. So this one day I'm on my way into the crossroads. Betty's on her way out and she told me that she was wanting to send me some pictures, that she had this large piece of furniture that she wanted to see if I was interested in. And she's like, you can have it. She and I'm like, what, really? You're you're just gonna give it to me? And yeah, sure enough, she starts telling me about it. And she's like, well, you know what? Let's just go over and you can see what it is and what you think. So we went over to Betty's house and oh my gosh, the collections, the stuff, she just has so many awesome things. I mean, it's like a treasure hunter's dream. I could spend all day looking at her collections. Okay, but I'm getting off topic here. Back to what this video is about. So anyway, she shows it to me and it is a antique ice box. Oh my gosh, you guys, she's just giving it to me, giving it to me. She wants it to go to a good home and I was her last resort. She tried selling it. She thought she had a couple people interested in it a couple different times. Um, even the owner of the Crossroads, she had offered it to her and the deadline for all of those people came and went and she said that I was her last hope and asked me if I wanted it. She's like, if you want it, you can have it. It can be yours for free. You just got to get it out of there. And I won't look at it. And I, I was just, I knew, I knew I wanted it. And the only thing that was holding me back is because I have so much furniture in storage in my mom's basement that I just recently was given from my cousin, stuff that belonged to my aunt and my grandma. And I have all that stuff that I still have to find a place for. So it's like my wheels are turning, you know, as I'm looking at this and we're talking and it's like, I knew I wanted it. I knew I wanted it really bad. I just, I had to convince my husband that it was okay for me to get it. And for those of you that have been following me, I have a lot of stuff. I buy a lot and I have a lot, but I, I like to decorate, you know? So it's like, it's okay to have things. But anyway, she's like, go ahead, you know, you take your time, take the weekend or take a week, you know, see what you, see what you think, talk it over with your husband. And so I told him about it and I'm like, honey, I gotta have this. I want this, I want this so bad. It's like, this is gorgeous and it's free. I mean, she's giving it to me. You know, once it to go to a good home and, I will give it a good home. I will give it a good loving home. So it just so happened that that weekend, my husband, sorry, I can't talk again. My daughter's boyfriend was visiting and 
we had the manpower to go get it. And in the beginning, Betty's like, just give me some time because it still had all of Betty's beautiful quilts and tablecloths and everything, but he still had it styled, you know? So Betty wanted time to be able to clear it out. And I'm like, sure, okay, you know, I can give you time. But then it's like, I knew if I didn't jump on it and go that weekend, I didn't know when I was gonna have the help to get it again because um, we really don't have a whole lot of manpower. It's just my husband and I and our daughter. So I knew if I didn't get it, I was gonna have to wait maybe a month or so. So I called Betty and I'm like, can we come tomorrow? And she was awesome about it. We made it work and I got it up here. And I tell you, it was, it was a big, big mammoth to move. And I'll explain that a little bit further in the video here, but um, I'm so happy to have this everyone. I mean, this is just, this is a treasure of a lifetime, seriously. It's like, how often do you get something like this just given to you? Um, Betty, you are just a doll. I just, I love it so much. Thank you, thank you, Betty, so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, enough jibber jabbering. Let's go inside so I can show you my icebox. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. Stick around because I'm gonna show you how I decorated it for fall. Check this antique icebox out, you guys. I tell you, every time I look at it, I still can't believe it's mine. It's in beautiful condition. And I gotta tell you, this was a mammoth to move. My husband kept joking around that now he had to go get scheduled for hernia surgery. Um, of course he didn't, but this thing, it was, it was a beast to move you guys. My husband and my daughter's boyfriend moved it. I tried to help as much as I could and my daughter tried, but I mean, I think we got more in the way than anything, but thankfully we were able to get it moved and nothing was damaged or harmed. So that that was a good thing. Nobody had to go for surgery, but I just, I love this so much, you guys. And there is actually, um, this is filled with sawdust. And I'm actually going to show you a picture where it's, you have to look close because I was really not able to get the greatest picture, but you can actually see the sawdust in between like the boards. Th this is just amazing. And I know we had sawdust everywhere and because, you know, it moves and it comes out and stuff. So, but there's still tons of sawdust left inside, but look at this. I mean, there is just so much storage, you guys. This is just gorgeous. So I spent a day giving it a really good cleaning and I wanted to condition it condition the wood, you know, feed the wood because this is a really old piece. So I first wiped it down really good with Murphy's oil soap. Then I applied liquid gold. L liquid gold has always been my go-to for conditioning and preserving wood. That's what my mom used when I was growing up and I always loved the smell of Murphy's Oil and Liquid Gold. I can remember when I was a kid, my mom would always do what she called her fall and spring cleaning and she would always use that on our home because we had a lot of wood paneling and I just loved that smell. So still to this day, I use that when I'm protecting wood. And I almost forgot to mention, this is filled with sawdust because they used sawdust as an insulator. I believe the slat shelves and the hardware are all original. This is going to provide so much extra storage space for me, and that'll give me more places to hide the treasures that I find when I'm thrifting and antiquing because for those of you that follow me, you know that I do buy a lot and it tends to at times overtake the house and then that's when my husband starts to get a little bit frustrated with all of my thrifting. I love thinking about all of the stories this icebox has to tell. I love thinking about where the general store was, what the store was like, um, what the people were like that worked there, what the owner was like, 
what kind of food or beverages might have been stored inside. I could just spend hours daydreaming about it. In this picture, you can see the sawdust between the boards. I knew when I started finding things that I wanted to decorate this with, I knew I wanted to stay true to the era and only decorate this with primitive and antique pieces. Some of the pieces are antiques, other ones are reproductions, and I'll explain as I go. This primitive checkerboard is old, and I guesstimate it to be around 100 years old. My uncle made it a long time ago, whenever he was a kid. My uncle, if he was still alive today, would be in his hundreds. So this is a piece that I will cherish. I've had it now for probably about five years. And this lantern is a reproduction. I bought it at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago, but I think it pairs nicely with the other pieces that I chose. The quilt sign, I just bought that yesterday at the Crossroads Country Mall, and I love it. I saw it and I thought, that is going to be perfect for this display. And that is a very old hogshead barrel. And it is a primitive piece, and it's definitely over 100 years old. I also bought that early this year at the Crossroads Country Mall, and it actually still has markings on it. Love that. And I added some faux corn. I always grew up calling that Indian corn, but I like to refer to it now as artificial or just decorative corn. So, but I love that. I decorate with this stuff so much in the fall. I love it. And I also added a few of my wooden bowls. Those are old and also some of the taps for the barrels. And I think that this all looks so nice. This is an old burlap potato sack. I also purchased that at the Crossroads Country Mall. And I wanted to keep it nice and simple for what I placed inside the barrel. And I just put a couple stalks of faux wheat and I'm really happy with that look. We'll go ahead and open up the door and you can see what I put inside. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I leave this door open actually all the time because I love to be able to look at the quilts and oh my gosh, I am just loving this so much. Oh, I, I just, I cannot say thank you enough to Betty. I tell you, this is just a wonderful, wonderful treasure. So what I did here was just placed some quilts in here that my grandma made. Um, this one was made by my grandma and this one was made by my grandma. This one um, was also made by my grandma. And then I have this one here that I purchased at the Crossroads Country Mall. I purchased this one recently um, at Goodwill. This quilt I bought a long time ago um, off of a friend of mine. I believe it was the first quilt that she ever made. And then I just also added a few of my quilted table runners and some tablecloths. And that's what I have in there so far. Um, I love it. I love it with the quilts. And here I have decorated for fall. And I just really wanted this to complement the ice box decor. What I did was here, I just placed a grapevine wreath. There's nothing on that wreath, it, or that wreath. Oh my goodness, maybe if I can talk properly today, but there is nothing at all on that wreath. It's just plain. And I just added some faux flowers and wheat stems and acorns to the white pitcher and just a few leaves and a pumpkin. That's also another, uh, burlap sack. This barrel is old. My mom gave it to me. Uh, it was actually in her parents' house when she was a kid. My mom did re, uh, she redid it. She gave it a little makeover, used a little bit darker stain and she painted the bands because she said it was in really bad condition. I personally wish she would have left it how it was, but 
She did this back when I was a kid, so I really wasn't interested in what she did with it back then, but now, Mom, I wish you would have just left it alone. I love it. You did a great job, but oh, I really wish it was how it was whenever your parents had it. And this is the chair that my sister-in-law found for me a couple of weeks ago at a yard sale, and I just added another grapevine wreath and the star, and then I just placed that little primitive kitty cat in front of it and added a few complimenting pumpkins to the display. And I also added in a little bit of straw. I just thought that was a nice little touch. I didn't want to add leaves. I thought about adding leaves, but I just thought, eh, look nice just to add a little bit of straw. So that's how it looks on this side of the ice box. Now I'll take you over and show you what I did on the other side. Just in case you're wondering, I haven't put anything in this side yet. Still trying to figure out what I want to place in there. And on this side, I just added a couple afghans. This is perfect. I mean, look at this, you guys. So much storage space. And I don't know if I'll keep these afghan here, but for now, I wanted them off of my sofas, so I just tucked them inside. And on this side, I added this old chair. I did recover the cushion. I thought this fabric matched more with my style than the plastic covering that was on the cushion. I tucked in a few of my uh, glass, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, my glass washboards. Um, I just stood those up against the back of the chair. And then here, I just took one of my old sewing machine drawers. I purchased this at the Crossroads Country Mall and I placed some of the old bottles that my parents found long ago inside. And I really think this complements the rest of the decor that I used to decorate the ice box. So do any of you remember when they used ice boxes like this? My mom does. Her parents had one when she was a kid, but it was a lot smaller than this. And I would love to know what you think of how I decorated the ice box and the area around it. So please feel free to leave me a comment in my comment box. And also, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that you like my content and you think I'm doing a great job.